Dunfall. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning. When our group met, that I'll probably speak before midnight. This is true, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm glad that there are still some people listening, and I, I appreciate that. And I'll try to make it interesting. Honorable Senators, I rise in support of Bill S-250, sponsored by Senator Boyer. As we all know, since 2017, Senator Boyer has been the voice of indigenous women, victims of forced sterilization, first in Saskatchewan and subsequently across Canada, with the assistance of many researchers. Her bill proposes to add to the Criminal Code assault provisions a new indictable offense designed to, pre to prevent the force or coerced serialization of persons in Canada by exposing an offender to up to 14 years in prison. This new offense is focused on consent and requires those who perform a medical act that will cause or attempt to cause someone to be sterilized to obtain a truly informed consent and to follow specific safeguards. Today, I won't delve into details of the proposed amendments as this, as this should be done in committee. I will rather focus on this bill's goal, the creation of a new criminal offense specific to forced sterilization. Those of you who have legal training may say that forced or coerced sterilization is already a crime in Canada under aggravated assault offenses. This is true. As pointed out by some witnesses before our Human Rights Committee, including former RCMP Commissioner Lucky. But it must be said that there's never been a charge of aggravated assault in relation with the force or coerced sterilization in Canada, even if Senator Boyer's office has documented thousands of indigenous women in Canada that experienced coerced or forced sterilization between 1971 and 2018. Others may add that all provinces and territories have legislation required informed consent for medical care and treatment, as that and that case law is replete with judgments awarding damages to patients injured by a medical procedure to which did not, they did not provide an informed consent. As a matter of fact, they are pending now before the courts of Saskatchewan, BC, Ontario, and Quebec, class actions related to forced, forced serialization of indigenous women. They seek some identification that the courts may eventually grant. Finally, some others may argue that forced sterilization is another manifestation of systemic racism against indigenous women. As such, it may require a comprehensive strategy to address such racism, including proper, proper training of medical and nursing students to address such racism, uh, in connections with indigenous health issues and an increase of indigenous professionals as recommended by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls for action 19, 20, and 24. I agree that a comprehensive strategy is required to protect women, especially indigenous women. But with the greatest respect, I don't agree that these facts shall deter us from proceeding to complete second reading of Bill S-250 and sending it to committee for review and detailed analysis. Like our Human Rights Committee in its report called, I quote, the scars that we carry, force and coerced sterilization of persons in Canada, part two, released in July 2022, I believe that the addition of a specific offense to the criminal code will be a valuable contribution to stopping once and for all forced sterilization. First, by adding after the sections on aggravated assaults a specific provision dealing with forced sterilizations, 
Parliament will send a powerful message to, the, to society, including victims, police officers, Crown attorneys, and judges, that forced sterilization can no longer be ignored by the criminal law system. Second, the deterrent effect of such a provision on medical practitioners and the regulatory bodies will be immediate. It will have a chilling effect on those medical practitioners who still believe in racial eugenics and are ready to perform sterilization procedure without truly free and informed consent. Third, we will implement a measure recommended not only by our Human Rights Committee, but also in Europe by, by the European Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, ratified by 37 countries. Article 39 of this convention provides that states should ensure criminalizations of surgery to terminate a woman's capacity to reproduce without her prior and informed consent. As of today, Malta, Belgium, France, and Italy have agreed, have acted accordingly. By amending our criminal code, Canada will show the rest of the world that it believes in this important aspect of preventing violence against women. As you may know, Canada has been criticized on this issue by the international community. In 2018, the United Nations Committee Against Torture expressed concern about reports of extensive forced sterilization of indigenous women and girls. In 2019, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and the United Nations Special Rapporteur called on Canada to take concrete action. Finally, forced sterilization is not only a part of our past genocidal policies against First Nations, but it continues. In its 2019 final report, the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls highlighted examples of programs in Canada that have, a, have, have aimed at subjugating or eliminating indigenous peoples, including coerced sterilization. In March 2021, Senator Boyer told us in this chamber, and I quote, tragically, forced and coerced sterilization continues to happen at this very moment, with cases being reported publicly as recently as 2018, end of quote. In its second report on forced sterilization, released in July 2021, our Human Rights Committee concluded as well that this form of violence against women continues to occur in Canada. Meanwhile, in 2019, following a recommendation in our Human Rights Committee's first report, the federal government established an independent advisory committee to study the extent of forced sterilization in Canada. Quebec's government refused to participate on the grounds that there had never been a sterilization policy in Quebec, that the practice did not exist there, and that health is a provincial matter. The first reason seems well-founded. Unlike Alberta and British Columbia, Quebec has never passed legislation encouraging eugenics. In fact, the dominant Catholic Church in Quebec in the early 20th century preached a natalist policy. The third reason has to do with political positioning and ignores the fact that the committee's mission was not to propose pan-Canadian standards, but to draw an overview of the situation across the country in order to shed light on the actions required by all levels of government. But at the heart of this response was a false premise that forced sterilization did not exist in Quebec, unlike the rest of Canada. Fortunately, two members of the Research Laboratory on Issues Related to Indigenous Women at the Université du Québec in Abitibi-Témiscamingue 
prepared an overview of the situation. Professor Suzy Bazid and doctoral student Patricia Bouchard, in partnership with the First Nations of Quebec and Labrador Health and Social Services Commission and the Assembly of First Nations of Quebec and Labrador. The research team between May 2021 and June 2022 gathered 105 testimonies from 35 indigenous people who chose to come forward following an experience of forced sterilization or obstetrical violence that they experienced as victims or witnesses. 14 Atikamax, 10 Inu, 5 Anishinaabe, 4 EU, and 2 Inuit people. Due to the pandemic, the research team was unable to visit an additional 20 individuals to collect their stories. Nine participants reported having undergone coerced sterilization and 13 others reported having been vic victims of other forms of obstetrical violence. In total, 22 women experienced coerced sterilization. They ranged in age from 15 to 46 at the time of the procedures, which took place between 1980 and 2019. The youngest woman to undergo, to undergo forced sterilization was 17 years old. In contrast, the woman who underwent this operation, operation the latest non-consensually was 46 years old. In addition, three other women had one or more forced abortions. Finally, six other women experienced obstetrical violence, which means that they were victims of discriminatory gestures, attitudes, and words from healthcare staff. It should also be noted that these acts of violence took place essentially in hospital centers located in cities serving Indigenous communities, namely Roberval, Latuc, Val d'Or, Joliette, and Settil. The report of this research team was made public on November 24, 2022. It concludes that in many cases, there was an absence of consent, and in others, that consent was obtained in an exp expeditious and precipitous manner, shortly before, during, or after birth. In addition, consent was sometimes obtained as a result of misrepresentations regarding the reversible nature of the procedure, described as a contraceptive measure. In sum, the report highlights 22 sterilizations where free and informed consent was lacking. What is also troubling is that in several cases, racist arguments were used to justify the procedure. For example, one doctor was quoted as saying, enough is enough, this has to stop. All the children you brought into the world are all going to live in misery. The report, end quote. The report concludes that systemic racism is present and contains 31 recommendations, including an invitation to the, gov to the Quebec government to end its reluctance to acknowledge this systemic reality, which hasn't been heeded. The report was widely reported in the media and other women came forward to the researchers. One woman reported that she was sterilized in 2020 at the age of 15. I note in passing that the researchers, with the support of their Indigenous partners, have undertaken a second phase to meet with the women that they had not been able to see before, as well as with new victims who wish to come forward. The College of Physicians acknowledged that the number of victims may be higher and that forced sterilization probably is still occurring. It added that it would make its members aware of the fundamental principle of informed consent and invite medical staff who witnessed these acts to report them to the college. In conclusion, Bill S-250 addresses manifestations of obstetrical violence that are still present in our healthcare system in Quebec and elsewhere in Canada. And I urge you, as does Senator Wells and Senator Labukan Benson, to send it to committee without further delay. Thank you, colleagues, for your attention. Despite the late hour, this issue requires our attention. Miigwech.